Catlia Zip is an orchid that has taught me a lot throughout the years that I have been growing her. How quickly magnesium deficiency becomes evident, and we will talk about that as well. How long does it take to get the balance of increasing the magnesium application right to counteract the deficiency versus salt buildup in the pot despite regular flushing, etc, etc. One thing I learned about Catlia Zip very, very quickly is the fact that she is a scale magnet, at least in my climate. In the past, I had the what I call classic scale, and I got to them quickly. But in the past two years, a new kind of scale has made its presence known on the patio, and for lack of a better description, I call it the minuscule scale because I cannot see it like its larger counterpart until I see the damage it does, and only then can I see the tiny white spot in the middle of the damage. Note to self with this orchid now is up the frequency of preventative treatments, and that will be a goal for this orchid moving forward. She was not on a repot schedule for 2024 either, but I had a little mishap and one section of the rim of the pot snapped. I could have waited another year, but I had this size in a pot in my stash. I had new growths on the way, new roots, as well as plenty of time between repot and drop in temperature. So why not do a reset for this orchid? Also, to see if my magnesium applications are of the right concentration, avoiding any future salt buildup. We will see. You see, what I have found is that this orchid needs that much magnesium in order for new growth to actually grow clean without the deficiency blotches. But if I give her a little bit more, I get salt buildup. And I'm thinking of giving her a bit more because I want her to recoup the deficiencies in the back structure. But then I get salt buildup. So now my whole goal is just to focus that all the new growths do not show magnesium deficiency because I cannot give her enough to recoup the back structures without incurring salt buildup, which of course is something I would like to avoid. If I were in a climate with much, much higher humidity, trust that I would not just be having a soak of Epsom salts at 200 parts per million, I would actually double that. But in my dry climate, I cannot be that generous. Anyway, as she was not rooted in the pot, that was a concern. And yes, by the way, there are two in this pot, which I'm not planning on separating. Anyway, not rooted in was concerning, but I had the new roots coming. So the worst that could happen is the existing pseudobulbs would shrivel until the new roots start doing their job. It was so nice though to see the first flush of new roots that grew earlier in the season, that they were doing well in the pot. But with the lecker clinging onto those tender roots, I sure was careful as to how much I wanted to do in form of a cleanup so that I don't snap them. Unfortunately though, these new roots also prevented me from doing a comprehensive cleanup of the base of the orchid along with the rhizome, taking a toothbrush to the rhizome. I really wanted to take this opportunity to do a little scrub scrub of any possible scale lurking down there, even if what I removed was already not of this world anymore. But I refrained and focused on doing as much of a root ball cleanup as possible without ruining the new root system from earlier in the season. While this orchid has not bloomed for us in several years, she is growing really well. And for the time being, I'm satisfied with that. Within a 12 month growth cycle, she is now growing the fourth new growth and they are going to have plenty of time to mature to a certain degree before the conditions change. That is my silver lining and hopefully one day she will spoil us with her amazing orange colored long lasting blue rooms. Also, 2024 marks the year that I now have one of her parents matured to blooming size, which is the Catlia Tenebrosa, and hopefully in 2025 we will have her other parent bloom for us, which is Catlia Millery. Speaking of when we see the Millery bloom for the first time, it would be so awesome to have you on board for when that happens, so if you would please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell, setting it to all. I would appreciate your support very much and a thumbs up would also be greatly appreciated. I have never had a video get to 100 likes within the first 48 hours of being aired. I wonder if this could possibly be the first video to reach that milestone. 
Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. <laughs> Another way that you could support the orchids is to consider a super thanks. This helps them get what they need when it comes to fertilizer and all that fun stuff. Or check out my merch store where you can find a whole selection of fun things that showcase orchids. And please know that you being here, having clicked on the video and are watching, I really appreciate your time. And now I feel bad because I have not even welcomed you to the patio. So welcome to the patio. It's always so good to have your company. And there we are, all done. No more chip pot, repot done. Now I will get an even better understanding if my magnesium concentration is dialed in properly so that the new growths will grow without the signs of deficiency or will I need to adjust accordingly to avoid salt buildup yet again? And here we are, fast forward four weeks. A quick look at how my cat Lea Zip is doing. After the big deluge, she got the flush over her life and the new growths would appear to not have been affected at all. Woohoo, is all I can say. Next up, I had to address my cat Lea Harpophila. Also, not on a repot schedule for 2024, but when I saw two more new growths coming and that single first new root up against the edge of the pot, yeah, we're not going to do that. So, pot size increase was a happy must. This orchid is in the process of growing growths two and three within the same 12-month grow period. That is a first. I am definitely not complaining that this repot is coming up this year as opposed to thinking it could go on the roster for 2025. I did manage to extend the time period of this orchid in its first pot for at least two years because of light training, trying to ensure that the new growths would grow back into the pot. And had she stuck with a single new growth in 2024, then we will not be needed needing to do this. Still, that root against the edge of the pot needed to be babied, even though the other new growth has not even started on its new roots. It matters not. Every root tip is precious and mucho valuable. <laughs> As you can see, I used mainly Ceramis for the first five years, but as she grows larger, I'm not going to continue with this high water retentive substrate because a bigger pot will be wetter for longer if I just continue with Ceramis. While all my Rapiculus Lelias are in a semi-hydroponic setup and they don't have the recommended quick wet-dry cycle, too much Ceramis is not going to be ideal moving forward either. Also, I'm not touching the root ball to do a major cleanup. There's no need. I just want to get her bumped up ASAP to limit the amount of root disturbance. Just because a new root system is in the works, there is no need to jeopardize what looks to be a nice little handful of happy existing roots. My thoughts on growing my Rapiculus Lelias in a semi-hydroponic setup, going against what the recommended culture is, is mainly because of the general lack of humidity in my climate. Growing this orchid with a fast wet dry cycle would make it too challenging for me to keep up with their watering for 80% of the year. I have however dialed back on using more ceramics and sand in Rapiculus Lelius that are established because I have seen some struggles since the summer of 2023 when I had three months of humidity consistently higher than 70%. This was so unusual, but the combination of my media combination with the high humidity, that did not work. So now I'm sometimes a little hard pressed to keep them from crisping up. <laughs> Note to self, do better. And yes, I apologize. They are Rapiculus catlias. I am so sorry. It's something I'm trying to train my brain to change. Flip the switch, Rapiculus catlias. Repeat after me, Rapiculus catlias ad infinitum. Anyway, I wanted to have ceramics for the reservoir though, but that would have resulted in the orchid too high up in the pot, so eventually I just decided to pot her up at pot level, where roots will be in the reservoir. Having her this low in the pot, mm, I'm hoping that the surface of the pot will be a little bit more protected from any extreme dry influences. We shall see. What I have to keep in mind though, is that now I have roots directly in the reservoir. Granted, some of them already were in the smaller pot in the reservoir, but that reservoir was smaller as well. So there's lots to keep in mind with this one moving forward. I have already emptied the reservoir after filling it post repot. I drained it out a day later. Small steps, small adjustments, just until the new roots find their way, hopefully into the pot. 
The rest of the pot is filled with medium-sized lava rock. I do wish I could have positioned her more into the corner of the pot in a diagonal heading into the middle, but that would have needed more fiddling with the existing root ball to make that happen, and I was just not prepared to do that. I'm thinking we should easily get another five years out of her, maybe four. Now though, I'm excited to see if all three new growths will bloom. Will they all bloom at once? Or is the older of the new growths just a great provider of a root system and the other two growths will bloom once mature? Hopefully all at once, etc, etc. Anyway, a good time with observations is ahead. While I do not like the time of year that this orchid blooms because that falls bang smack in the middle of winter, I do appreciate the cheerful pop of bright orange, long-lasting blooms with that frilly, dainty lip. I love it during a time of year when things are just blech. <laughs> If you have any questions or thoughts on what you saw in this video, please take advantage of the comments section. Speaking of which, even if you don't, I love hearing from you, so just say hi, let me know how you're doing. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Hope you enjoyed the video. Wishing you a wonderful day on that one condition though, that you stay safe, please. Take care. Bye.